During the hot, humid summers we have here in Japan, it's tough to work up an appetite and even harder to find the motivation to cook. That's why we have a whole category of dishes centered around cold noodles, and whether we're talking ramen, udon, or somen, there's a chilled noodle for everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to serve chilled soba noodles, or zaru soba, and it's one of my favorite summertime lunches, so stick around. This is a zaru. It's a traditional woven strainer, and it's what chilled soba is served on. The other main component of the dish is the tsuyu, or dipping sauce, and that's what I want to focus on today. Let's start with a look at our ingredients. For the dipping sauce, dashi is by far the most important ingredient, and I'm using one cup of it today. There are lots of ways to make dashi, and I've posted a video before showing you how to make it from scratch. But today I'm going to be using dashi packs. They're like little tea bags that include all the ingredients you need, like katsu bushi and kombu, and they make preparing the stock as easy as boiling a pot of water. For the noodles, I have some fresh soba here, but dried ones will work as well. We're also going to use three tablespoons of soy sauce, one tablespoon of sake, and one and a half teaspoons of sugar. For the garnish or yakumi, I've got some scallions, wasabi, and daikon radish. I'm also going to be using some unseasoned nori. For the tare, I'm going to add the dashi, soy sauce, sake, and sugar to a pot, and then we're going to bring this over to the stove and bring it to a boil. Once it's at a full rolling boil, let it cook for one minute to boil off the alcohol in the sake and soy sauce. Okay, this should be good, so let's cool this off in a bowl of cold water. Be sure to change out the water a few times to get the sauce down to room temperature. While we wait for this to cool, I'm gonna prep our yakumi. Let's start by peeling our daikon. Daikon is spicier at the tip and sweeter towards the top, so I always like to use the top half for making daikon oroshi. Now I'm gonna grate this using a daikon grater. If you don't have one, the coarse rasp on a box grater will work as well. This is gonna make a slurry of pulp and water, and since we don't want to water down our tare, be sure to strain this in a fine mesh sieve like this tea strainer. For the scallions, I'm going to trim the roots off and then cut them down to a more manageable length like this before chopping them up. Finally, for the nori, I'm going to cut it into thin strips that are about an inch wide using clean scissors. Then I'm going to gather the strips up and cut them into very thin strips like this. You can also do this with a knife or just tear it up with your fingers for a more rustic look, but I like how these thin strips cling to the soba. I often get asked about my recommended brands for Japanese ingredients. Unfortunately, most of the best products just aren't available outside of Japan. That's why I've teamed up with Kokoro Care Packages and they're helping me deliver some of my favorite ingredients to over 35 countries. For this zaru soba recipe, I've included my favorite soy sauce, dashi packs, and nori. So hit the link in the description down below to order your box before we run out. For the soba, I've got a large pot of boiling water here, and I'm going to add my noodles in. These fresh ones cook in about two minutes, but it'll depend on the brand you're using, so make sure you check the package on your noodles for the exact time. Soba has a tendency to boil over, so be sure to keep a close eye on the pot so you don't make a mess. When the soba is done, I'm going to use chopsticks or tongs to transfer the noodles into a strainer. This is because we want to keep the boiling liquid to use later on. Now you want to rinse the soba under cold running water to remove any extra starch from the surface of the noodles. Be sure to agitate it with your hands like this until the noodles are down to room temperature and the water runs clear. 
Okay, that should be good, so let's chill our soba by adding in some ice cubes and tossing the noodles around. This firms up the texture of the soba, and it's gonna make it so cool and refreshing. Our tare should be cool by now, so let's pour it into a cup that's big enough for dipping a mouthful of soba. I'm also gonna arrange our grated daikon into a mound on a small plate, along with the scallions and wasabi. Finally, to plate the soba, I'm gonna grab small handfuls of noodles from the ice water and make little mounds of soba on our zaru. This makes it much easier to eat because you can pick up the bite-sized mounds with your chopsticks and they won't get all tangled up. Okay, let's get this over to the table and give it a try. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to have some noodles. Itadakimasu. All right, we've got the sauce here, and I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of the daikon in here, some scallions, a little bit of wasabi. A little goes a long way. And let's add some nori. And let's grab a bite of this soba. Mmm, the dashi is just so savory, and it goes beautifully with the nutty buckwheat in the soba. You know, if the dashi ends up being too salty, you can water it down with a little bit of water if you like. Okay, last bite. So you remember how we kept that soba boiling liquid? This is where we're gonna use it. Hang on, I'll be right back. The boiling liquid from the soba is called sobayu, and it's loaded with buckwheat flavor from the noodles. I've reheated it, and I'm gonna pour some into our remaining tare to make a delicious, comforting broth. Oh, it's so calming. It's a little bit thick because of that starch from the soba and the buckwheat that's in there. But it sort of mellowed out the saltiness, so it's like a nice dashi soup stock. Oh man, that's so good. It's the perfect end to a perfect meal. These chilled soba noodles are a great way to cool off on a hot summer day. I've kept things pretty basic today, but try adding some ginger for a little extra kick or zest some of your favorite citrus into the sauce for a refreshing zing. As always, let me know if you enjoyed this video by giving this a big thumbs up and be sure to share it with all your noodle loving friends. All right, I'm gonna go slurp up the rest of the soba, but before you go, be sure to check out this playlist for more delicious noodle recipes, and I'll catch you in the next one.